Hey team, welcome back to the wonderful world of Waikato Sheds. Today you've got Glenn and Bronick, and we are your design and sales gurus here at Waikato Sheds. And between us, we've got 20 plus years experience in sales and construction. So we love what we do and we're really keen to help you. Today we thought we'd just do a um, bit of a casual video on what do you think about when you're buying a shed? How to buy a shed? So that's what it's all about. Yep. That's the crux of this video today. And I think I'll hand it over to Bronick to, where do we start? That's a good question, Glenn. Where do we start? Well, there's a number of places we'd like to look at. Firstly, you've got to understand the size of the shed that you want. Uh, do you want a small double garage? Do you want um, something that's big enough for a sleep out? Do you want a workshop? Are you going to put a, um, your RV in there or a boat? Do you want it to be a habitable shed? Are you looking for a gym? Are you looking for um, the type of shed? Does it need to be a mono pitch? Does it need to be a gable? Can it be an American barn? The other thing also we look at is, is, is your budget. You know, um, there's no point to trying to build the Taj Mahal if you can only afford, you know, something a lot smaller. So we ask these questions and we try to gauge what it is your purpose for the shed, why do you want it, how, do you, how's, how will it fit on your section and everything else, and then we can look at customising it to your needs. Glenn, how would you yeah, like to talk about that? Absolutely, customisation is the key. No two sheds are ever the same, we never build two sheds that look exactly the same, so we, that's the key. Find out what the clients want, customise to their needs, but as you mentioned, to the site as well, that's crucial. Uh, there's a lot to consider when you're talking about the site. Um, depending on the zone and where it's located, uh, there's minimum setbacks, uh, there could be covenants on your title, and also we'll look into the district plan in case um, you know there's maximum heights uh, that you're allowed. Uh, you might not even need a consent. There are rules around consent-free sheds depending on your zone. That's where we have the advice. We can guide you through that through yep. that whole process. Basically, it's an ultimate guide right from woe to go. Uh, in, in addition to that, future-proofing is a key thing to think about. Don't just, don't just design the, the depth of the shed to just fit your ute or your boat, um, and you can't even walk around it and, and access it and do things. Uh, but also, think about on-sale. You know, um, we're not just building any old shed just to fit something, and think about future-proofing it so when you go and on sell it, you've really added value to, to the wider market when you go to sell it because you've allowed someone to put a deeper boat in, maybe a camper wagon or a horse float for the height of the doors. So let's, let's talk about all those sorts of things. And if your budget allows it, we can talk about it. So yeah, all about customization. What other details are you thinking about there, Brian? Some of the details that we look at when we're looking at customization and, and what fits your needs in that. Um, things like um, roller doors versus sectional doors. Um, roller doors are really good because they roll up inside themselves mm -hmm. as a sectional door comes up and goes along the top of the ceiling. Um, do you, how big do your doors need to be? Does it need to be to fit a ute? Does it need to be to fit uh, an RV? Or are you doing it in such a way that you're going to have um, a workshop with hoists in it? So do we need to go taller? Um, we've done workshops in the past that, that fit trucks. So, you know, our roller doors can go as high as five by five uh, meters. Um, or you can get a sectional door. With the sectional doors, they're pretty cool too because you can insulate them. Mm. Um, other things to look at is, is joinery. Uh, what kind of joinery do you want? You know, you can have a sliding door, you can have stackers doors, you can have French doors. Um, it all depends on what works for you and what is best for you. And we, we can have a chat to you about that, how many windows and doors you want, um, the size of the doors. We can also look at whether you need vents on your roof, whether you want clear lights, um, and, and just get a gauge of what you want and, and how you want to do it. The other thing also is that we do things to quality. So again, Glenn, what kind of quality do we do for oh, our sheds? Quality, massive, massive topic there to talk about. That's really, that's synonymous with the Waikato sheds. Uh, we're not your cheapest, <coughs> and proudly so. We're chalk and cheese when you compare to some of the other uh, providers out there in the market, and there's a raft of reasons, you know, thicker gauge steel, customised flashings, you know, a lot of careful thought around what goes into the materials. They're solid sheds, they're built to last 50 years versus some other providers are only 25. We build them right, we build them to last, we build, because they add value, you know, th this is an asset for your, uh, for your property. 
even all the agents out there that we talk to, they, if it's a Waikato shed on site when they're selling or listing a property, they mention it. They proudly put that in their advertising and in their marketing mm. because, because people recognise it. People want a Waikato shed. And what we find is clients, when they've made a decision to, new, to go with us, it's typically, they've had one or two or three uh, quotes, of course, on the table, but on balance and when they've weighed up and they've come down to our wonderful Eureka show shed and actually looked at the quality of the steel and the structure and just how, how amazing it all is put together, they make that decision based on best value with the quality in mind. And that's a real key item uh, to mm -hmm. consider. Because as we all know, uh, price is long forgotten um, after quality is remembered. We got so many referrals and recommendations to go with us. Quality is right at the top of that list. Uh, but quality is, is not just the materials, it's how it's been put together. And that probably brings us to the build crew. Yes, yes. Well, um, we're very lucky. We, we've got a number of teams of crews with us. Uh, and some of them have been here since we've been in inception for the last 20 years odd. But the cool thing is about our build crews is, is that they take pride in what they build. Mm -hmm. Every single shed they build, they feel like they're, you know, they're building it for themselves. You know, we go along and we, and we you know, we're forever on site filming, as you guys are <laughs> well aware. But we're, we're doing that not just to show people who our builders are and how they do, so you can actually see who they are. Mm. But we're also showing the quality that they do, the consistency with the workmanship. And that goes all the way through to our build partners as well as our suppliers. You know, we, we talk about Connect, we talk about Fisher Windows. A number of times we've asked Fisher Windows to go back to a job after it's been completed and they're more than happy to go there and, and, and fix it because it's their, their reputation on the line as well. Mm. The same with um, B&D Doors and Dominator and, and um, Waikato Doors. A number of times they've gone back to jobs after it's been finished and sometimes this could be years. Um, we, we've had one recently where it was one of the first sheds we ever did and um, they had some damage to a flashing and we went back and fixed that 15 years later. Um, so again, you know, we're, we're, our workmanship is, is right up there. Um, our build crews, they're not going anywhere and we're very choosy about who we get to build our sheds. Mm. So um, yeah, no, we're very, very proud people here and we, and, and we love what we do. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the quality is consistent. Yeah. Uh, and as you say, we carefully hand select those <coughs> people. So we wouldn't refer or recommend those are those key contractors out there to do no. the concrete or to do the earthworks like A1, shout out to them. Oh, look. If they didn't have consistent um, workmanship and no. quality, we wouldn't be recommending I, I, them. So. I mean, to give you a good yeah. example, all of those people worked on our own shed here. We had nobody work on our shed except our people. And you can clearly come in here any time you like <coughs> and see the quality we've done. Please do. That probably brings us to the yeah. kind of a conclusion. So. Eureka, this is where we're based, our show shed. It's a fantastic example of, of what we do, an awesome shed. We welcome people to come down. Give us a call first, maybe, just to make sure one of us are here. Yep. But yeah, a lot of our clients get a real kick out of coming through here and find it real beneficial. Uh, once we talk about the nuts and bolts and all the little ins and outs and all the options and things you can consider. So look, yeah, reach out online, phone, give us a bell. Uh, Glenn and Bronick, um, the sales gurus at Waikato Sheds here. We welcome um, your questions. We welcome you to come along. We want to guide you through the whole process so you make the ultimate shed buying decision in a nutshell. Awesome. Cheers, guys.